Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to TechPoint. Today our guest is Hans, the co-founder at Fedibola.ai. Hello. Hey Christian. Hey everyone. Glad to be here. Nice to see you. Please tell us what your company does. Yeah, sure. So um, we build custom data sets for go-to-market teams, uh, mostly for, for sales development teams. And we use large language models, AI, uh, and custom scraping jobs to identify companies in the market that would benefit the most from your solution. So your sales team doesn't spend any time on either manually qualifying accounts before you reach out um, or disqualifying a large amount of accounts that get into the funnel anyway. Okay, but how, how does it work? So we have our own database that we often start from, but often we also use a starter port like Zoom Info or Apollo. So whatever you're currently doing to check what your total addressable market is, uh, or maybe you already have that sitting in your CRM, that data, we take it, and then we uh, we analyze that data at scale. So you tell us what to look for, um, maybe look for SOC 2 badges uh, on a website, or maybe look in a privacy policy, what type of personal identifiable data companies are are um, collecting, but it could also be something like, okay, what does the checkout process of this e-commerce store look like? Do they actually have a fast checkout option? Uh, or how long does it take for this sales team to get back to me uh, when I start a chat or book a demo? So there are all things that we check programmatically. Sometimes we build these custom bots that you know try and book demos or try and check out a, a product. And sometimes it's just scraping and then asking a large language model, hey, this data that we just scraped, uh, can you analyze that and tell us if this uh, is true or not true? I understand. Thank you for explaining. And uh, sure. are there multiple services that you offer? Um, yes and no. So we, um, this is the main service that we offer and we're building a product around it. So the, the data that we're building and data sets we're building, we're, um, we're putting a front end on that so that people can, can easily build these data sets themselves without needing us. Mm -hmm. which is obviously a more cost-effective solution. And then in some cases, one major other issue that we see is, okay, now you have that data, but how are you going to actually reach these people? And a lot of sales teams, they're old-fashioned, right? So they have one domain, then they give each SDR an inbox and a link, they have a LinkedIn profile, and it's good luck, and they try reaching out. And there's no volume, no scale, it's not predictable, and a ton of emails land in spam anyway. And when they're thinking, you know what, we want to reach more people, then it's usually a matter of, re of, of hiring more SDRs. And that really is the old way of doing things. And um, almost luckily, you know, we were all forced with the economy taking a downturn to, to change and to say, okay, we're going to have to do uh, the same or more, but with a lot less. So um, that's where we come in as well, where we then build more of a modern infrastructure, where we help you almost automate the entire SDR function and just set up an infrastructure where you can at scale reach out to this, you know, this newly gathered data without having to add more people on board, ramp up SDRs and all that. Well, but in the future, you will make it uh, fully automatic or will there still be some processes where you need uh, your team? Um, so on the data side, yes. So we already have most of that fully automated. Obviously, sometimes uh, companies, they need a more custom solution. And that's where we still build the custom solution. But we already have a product in place that uh, that people could access. Uh, we also have APIs in place. So mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have some companies that are using the APIs. That's also a really popular way of accessing our data or using our data in um in your for example in your inbound lead flow and then you enrich these accounts and you can then bucket them and send them to the right uh to the right sales rep uh, so that part we've already done uh we've already fully automated that um then the actual so the infrastructure building that is now maybe 85 percent automated and we're getting really really close to 100 percent um so yeah that's something that you know we're we're really close to fully automating, uh, but to us, it sort of sounds like a two different products. So we might have to separate that at some point. So we're still um, still going through all that. Okay, so you have a lot of uh, possibilities, but what yeah. is the pricing right now? Um, so it depends. So for custom data sets, that's a little bit tricky to give pricing there. Uh, but when it comes to actual database, so companies can access that, uh, pricing starts at around 750 bucks per month and you get access to our data, you get API access as well to then go and maybe analyze your CRM or uh, plug it into your inbound lead flow, et cetera. Uh, and then most companies, they found that they can actually completely 
um, get rid of Zoom Info, Apollo, those types of subscriptions. So that's actually a big cost saver for them, as well as you know, you're able to do a lot more, but with less headcount. So that's that's a really major cost saver on that end as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, when did you start the company? Um, about seven months ago. So yeah, like late 2022, early 2023. Are you the only founder? No. Um, so there's three of us. There's um, so there's yeah, there's three of us. We founded a company before, also in the AI space. Um, we are we sold that, so we're finalizing the whole the whole deal there. So you know that's great and exciting. But now with the same founding team, we saw a really big opportunity here as well. So um, and we know we know what each person does, what each person's skills are. Uh, we have one co-founder who is really technical. So he he's, let's say, our CTO. We have one co-founder who's really in between. He has a lot of soft skills, but he also helps out a lot on the technical side. Um, so he's very helpful as, as let's say, uh, that unicorn who can do everything. <laughs> and then I'm really on the growth side and the sales side. So growth, marketing, sales, etc. That's awesome. And uh, what did the last project do? So the last project was really around the messaging where we helped um, agencies or sales development reps to uh, personalize their outreach. So we would take the data that you had and you gave us that data. Uh, or we helped you get data from Sales Navigator. And then we wrote these personalized snippets that you can use in your messaging. So maybe something based on, imagine, you know, someone will come in your podcast, then we're able to find that and we can say, hey, really enjoyed your podcast where you talked about, you know, Pavel, yeah. this and that. So we were able to find that based on LinkedIn profiles, et cetera. So we really helped um, automate that part. But that's when we really found that, okay, you can have really great messaging, but if your targeting is off, then it's not going to work. It's not going to resonate anyway. And we saw, we saw a bigger opportunity there. Well, that's fantastic. And what did you say was your biggest challenge throughout the, the journey? Um, so we're paddable. Um, so there, <laughs> there are a lot of challenges. Um, and, you know, as you're facing them, they all seem really big. Um, it's, uh, it sort of it was sort of tricky to find a way to prioritize things. So how like are you going to try and keep this really big database and try and keep all the data fresh? Um, or are you going to um, do a lot of real-time scraping as people come in with their data? So there's that part. So that's from, let's say, an infrastructure technical point of view, but also how are you going to serve people? So we found that an API is a really easy way for us to serve people, but that makes it kind of tricky to show value early on because people are just used to having oh, this, this interface that they can click in, they can see the data, they can preview it, and they can say, okay, yeah, you know what? This data looks right. Ah, okay, I see the value. Um, so that was initially why we built the front end, just to be able to visualize our data. And then we realized, hey, you know what? We might as well actually build this into a full SaaS tool and give users access. Um, so those were a couple of, of pretty major challenges that in hindsight, you know, the, the solutions were pretty logical. But um, yeah, they seemed like pretty big challenges. Thank you for sharing. And how about the biggest mistake that you did? <laughs> um, plenty of mistakes. So a lot of mistakes that we made was trying to um, make big decisions early on without really talking to a lot of people. So maybe assuming certain things. Um, so then you start running in one direction and then you realize, okay, you know what? Probably not a great, not a great direction to, to run off into and you make it like a really small pivot. But if you're a small team with not a lot of resources, then every wrong turn that you take has a pretty big impact on, on, on everything. So, um, um, yeah, that, that would probably be it. And how did you find, find your uh, first customers? Was it through network? Um, Yes, so we have some partners that we work with. We started out with custom data jobs for some really amazing partners who was who were serving their clients. So that's where we found the initial customers. Then, but then everything after that is just good old cold email, cold outreach. So that's your uh, favorite uh, go-to-market strategy. Yeah, always. <laughs> I guess <laughs> always. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and now let's talk more uh, on the on the advice for for sales uh, sales teams. What sure. is the biggest? Uh, mistake that you see sales teams do nowadays? Um, so they don't really focus on, on uh, let's say, reliable infrastructure and on, on scaling things in a predictable way. Like I said, they often hire headcounts. So you come in as an SDR, 
that you have this inf- okay you have let's say a vp of sales then you have sdrs man- sdr managers under that and then you have an army of sdrs under that then each sdr sort of works with his own messaging tries his own things and reports back on what during one-on-ones to the sdr manager the sdr manager then gives feedback and then tries to get them to a certain point where maybe they book you know um they book let's say 20 demos per per month right and they do that with every single sdr every sdr that comes on has a ramp up time uh, uh, then the burn rate is super high because they get burned out uh, or they go to different companies, different organizations. And it's just, it's this really inefficient machine that just, you know, you know that, that people are trying to push up the hill. And it's just the way that people are are used to doing it and doesn't really work where instead you should, and that, that's what I call the infantry approach. And then um, we opt for, let's say, special forces, a special operations approach where uh, you can almost cut out the entire SDR part and you have your SDR leaders who are usually your your historical, historically your best performers. They actually know what they're doing and you give them technology that then can, they can you know turn some buttons and they can try some things and they can say, hey, let's try this messaging, uh, let's try this angle, let's try this segment. And if you can really easily provide those segments and if you can really easily uh, get new messaging out at a really high volume early on, then you can really test, really early test different ideas and you can actually test at a scale that A-B testing, et cetera, makes sense. You can actually derive insights from it. So um, that's what we feel should be and just have, you know, your, let's say, special forces focus on on things that are really impactful, that really, um, that really drive revenue. Um, that's where we feel you know, the focus should be a lot more on than what it is now. That's super valuable. Thank, thank you very much. And what what do you think uh, is the most important trait of a salesperson? Um, a grit, obviously. I mean, be, being a sales is really hard. So let's say if you're an SDR, you need to book meetings, then you need to be super disciplined and consistent, have your blocks say, okay, you know what, from 10 to 2, cold calling, um, from two to three, gonna update my CRM, and after I'm just gonna send emails, things like that. So you need to really, be really disciplined, um, and and just stay consistent. Then, as imagine your full cycle, you're actually in sales. Um, it's all about um, about always being being willing to learn. So I'm, you know, not not really great at sales, but I'm very, you know, always really happy to study and, and learning. And there's some really interesting things that I'm learning now from, you know, your Josh Brown, Jason Bay, uh, a couple of other guys. And I feel that as long as you're always um, willing to keep, to keep learning, remain coachable, etc., cetera, then um, uh, that's a really important trait. I think if you're, um, if you're actually, you know, really doing sales. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, what is the future vision? for uh, Petibol? So the future vision is really optimizing things. Um, I get really uh, frustrated by inefficiencies. So (laughs) then you see these sales companies, uh, these sales, or you talk to sales leaders and they say, well, we don't have budget for this. We don't have budget to try a new tool, new approach. And I'm thinking, well, um, (laughs) you could, in theory, get rid of most of the people taking up the budget that you currently have. Most of the tools currently taking up your budget because most of them are crap. They give you crap data. And instead, just focus on really quality data that you know, okay, these companies are a good fit. And then your sales reps can actually spend the time to break into the account, to check it out, look at the person, what are they doing? How should I approach this? And you know that time is being well spent because your DQ rate as these, these callbacks again to the funnel is going to be way, way, way lower and your conversion rates across across the board are going to be way higher. So we really want to make sure that sales leaders, they're able to um, um, to adjust their vision a little bit. So we're, yeah, we're really set out to change the world, I guess, which is, you know, every startup, I suppose. But yeah, we really, we're really trying to uh, drive that vision home and hopefully um, just really help help organizations streamline their operations when it comes to uh, when it comes to going to market a routine for you and uh, i guess for now you're still uh, bootstrapped yeah we're still bootstrapped and are you planning to raise in the future um well funny story we actually got rejected by yc um so that was um, it was a great experience but that actually ironically helped us because we could delay our product a little bit and it helped us talk to a lot more people, uh, get more service experience under our belt, which in turn helped us build a better product. 
Um, so for the future, who knows? Like, it really depends on um, uh, on how fast we grow and how things are going. And you know, with the sale of our previous business, there's no direct need. So we've really always looked at um, at funding more as a um, either an yeah, a networking thing where you get access to the right people, um, and also um, an acceleration. So if we see someone else go to market with a solution that we feel is really competing with ours and we want to make sure we stay ahead of them, then it could make sense to raise and, and really try and accelerate. But for now, we, we don't really feel that need. I understand. Thank you for the transparency. I love Appreciate to hear how you started your career from, from the start. Um, well, all right. Yeah, so that's, um, I'm getting older, so that's that's oh, that's <laughs> a little while ago. So I started in um, in sales, actually, door-to-door -door sales, which I think is uh, is a great experience if you're young, because then, you know, it's it's you still have the patience. It's all good. You, so I used to go <laughs> running from door-to-door -door to try and beat to try and beat the other ones and try and set new new records, etc. So that's how I was started out. Then I actually traveled for a bit before I then be, uh, played poker professionally for a while. Mm -hmm. So that was great to combine, traveled the world, played poker, met a lot of great people, lived with friends all around the world. Uh, that awesome. was just overall, it was, was a great experience. But um, my passion for that faded and it's not something that you want, well, that I at least wanted to do for the rest of my life. So. Uh, went into retail, was a manager at a really large retail chain in, in Amsterdam, Holland, before I discovered my real passion for, let's say, marketing sales for that, you know, you know wherever that overlaps. And uh, started in a lead generation agency back in Holland, then moved into marketing and then started my own company in, in the lead generation space. So, um, uh, and then before founding our own, uh, our last company, Line, uh, I've also worked as head of growth, head of marketing, uh, but all those roles, they were in the same space, so all the sales automation slash marketing automation space, because uh, I found that that's really where our passion lies. That's awesome. So you have a lot of uh, experience. What would be your best piece of advice for a starting marketer, salesperson, or uh, founder? <laughs> because you did them all. <laughs> sure. Um, so it's not to get overwhelmed. I am really, really focused on practical experience. So... You know, you need to stay. You need to stay relevant. You need to learn new things and everything. So, but whenever I start listening to, um, well, I'm very sorry, but to podcasts, you know, and try and educate myself. Whenever I start reading all these these books, these blogs, I sometimes get a little bit overwhelmed. So for me, it really just is focused on talking with others, what works for them, and then applying that and really actually doing that. And that's how you learn. And then, sure, if you feel, hey, you know what, I need to add this skill, then really have target learning on adding that skill to your uh, to your skill set uh, and then focus again on actually applying that. So you learn by doing and not necessarily by overwhelming yourself with all the information that's out there. So start projects, uh, run with them, try new things. And if you feel that you need to learn something new, then really focus on just targeted learning. Uh, that would be probably my, uh, my main advice. Thank you so much. I have one last question for you. What's yeah. your favorite SaaS product that you use daily? <laughs> SaaS product. So um, we sort of recently started using DataBar.ai. Okay. And they're they're very very helpful. They're able to connect you to a lot of APIs. So I used to write a lot of custom scripts in Google Sheets, and then that often wasn't really scalable. Or just custom scripts everywhere. It, it just so for 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 me for us, DataBar is just a really great tool to have all of that together. Uh, and just really work through some data, some let's say smaller data sets that I'm building for own campaigns, for example. So I'm finding them very helpful. And then I'm a really big bubble guy. So bubble.io, if I want to build a quick application or even a full product. So our last product that we sold was built in bubble. Then I, I always turn to bubble. And I know I'm cheating because I'm named one on one, but make.com has to be up there as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And um, is there anything else that you want to mention on today's podcast? 
Nolo, thanks so just very much appreciate you having me here. Um, it was a great experience. And yeah, if anyone has any questions about anything that I talked about, I'm always very happy to network. That's another big lesson that I've learned that networking is as important as, as it gets. So if anyone wants to connect and just ask me anything or want feedback or anything or just wants to show me something I'm working on, that I'm really, really excited to um, to do that. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Same thank you for joining. Thank you. <laughs>